Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, I am so pleased that you clicked on that link. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the books that I read over the holiday season. My favorite way of consuming fiction is with audiobooks. So the first book that I listened to was N.K. Jemisin's The Fifth Season. What a story! I thoroughly enjoyed this story. The story is set on a planet that is very much like ours. It has a thin crust on top of molten rock. This planet is unhappy. Volcanoes and tsunamis and earthquakes all the time. So that people can't settle and set up communities, build their cities without the fear of losing them quickly because of what the earth is doing. Nature has provided us or provided that community because you know, I was in it. I was, I was in the story. This was my story. This was my book. Nature provided some people with incredible powers that are able to control the earth's crust and calm it down. They get called from an institute, pay the institute for the services of the people with the special powers, which is great. You know, you make a little money because you got powers. When you start reading the book, at first you don't realize that all the different sort of pieces of the story are about the same character. So the timeline was broken up. I was unable to make a connection with the character's emotions. So I could, I could sympathize with them when they went through some tough stuff, but I wasn't able to empathize. But it was still a great story and I encourage you to go and read this book. Overall, I would give this book a big old thumbs up. The second book that I read is Silo by DJ McHale. And it is a story that is set in a fictional island off of the coast of Maine called Pemberwick, which does not exist. Trust me, I looked. One night, the military drops in on the city and tells them that there has been a virus outbreak and they do not want that virus spreading to the rest of the country. So they're like, Phew. But the night that the military came in, three teenagers were out. Where are their parents? You know, there was no way that my parents, wait, no, I take that back. My brother escaped. My brother routinely left the house in the middle of the night. So there you go. They saw something fishy that made them not believe what the general was telling them about the quarantine. Cause while they saw that some people were getting sick, there was also like a drug that was going around the town. Anyway, that's the story of the book is that the teenagers are trying to leave the island that they're not supposed to leave teenagers. The thing I loved about this book was the way the author handled the teenage story. Teenagers don't have the frontal lobe developed yet. So the stuff that they do, they get into trouble even when they're not trying to. I really loved how he handled those particular characters. The thing about this story is that we've heard it so many times before. I haven't thought of how to make a quarantine story fresh and new. But that may be my limitation. If you know of a good quarantine story, please leave the link in the comments and I promise you I'll go check it out. I need to know, can a quarantine story be fresh and new? Or is it just the dome, the dome, the dome over and over again in many different ways, you know? I would give Silo a sideways thumb. I don't know, it was just, it was okay. It was an okay story. What can I say? It was okay. The third book that I read is The Eye of Minds by James Dashner. That was a wonderful tale. I enjoyed it so much. The story is set in the future on this earth where people are living out their lives in virtual reality. You purchase a coffin, purchase a coffin, you lay in it, me in a coffin, never going to happen. Think of something else, programmers. I will need an avatar to go in the coffin. You purchase a coffin, you lay in it, and you enter the virtual world. The story starts off with one of the three teenagers of the story seeing someone commit suicide, not just in the game, but in life. Because people died in the game all the time and you felt the sensations of death, but still you got up from your coffin and your ass was okay. Her, the teenager who was watching her 
gets caught up by people in the real world who want to know about the death of the girl and they're warning him something's happening and so he needs to be a part of the whatever so that they can solve the thing and, ah, they get rolled into this adventure where they have to solve some issue with something going on in the virtual world and at the end of the book was a surprise it was so sweet what it was so great that i could not wait to pick up book two the rating for this book i'm giving it two thumbs up thank you james dashner for that book the fourth book that i consumed is the school for good and evil by soman chainani it is a story set in a fictional town that is in the middle of a forest and the people who live in this town believe that fairy tales are real. And the reason why they think this is because every so often they get a publication from some mysterious place that has a brand new fairy tale with characters they know. Like people who lived in their village, in their town. So every once in a while, a schoolmaster comes to the village and kidnaps two children about 12 years old and takes them off to the school one is a good child and one is a bad child uh, the good one is taught how to be you know the prince and princess of the fairy tales to be the force for good the bad child is taken to the school for evil to be taught how to be the villain you know the witch or the ogre the force for bad if you do well in school you'll be a prince or a witch, or a princess, or an ogre, you know. Take your pick, choose your uh, story. And if you don't do well, then you end up as a shrub or a rock, and that's no way to live your life. It is boring and cold. The story follows two girls taken from this village to the school for good and evil. One of the girls is an emo child. Like she has black hair and she dresses in black clothes and she's gloomy and people shun her. She happens to live at the graveyard. The good girl in the story is flaxen haired and beautiful. She's preparing herself to go and be a princess in a story. She wants to leave this town. She wants to go and be a princess in a fairy tale that people will read and, and I believe that this story was just not written for me like, you know, like we can root for a princess who's not cute. Like we can, there's no problem with that. There can be princesses who are not cute, who are good people. I found this story to be really, really problematic in the way that it handled the characters. So there's the cute girl who's really evil inside and the not so cute girl who has a heart of gold. And so when they get taken to the school of, for good and evil, the emo girl ends up going to the princess school. The princess girl ends up going to the villain school. The characters in the villain school have congenital issues. They are disabled. They have permanent frogs in their throats. Those are the kind of people who they put in the school for evil. Like you can't have a frog in your throat and just be like a good person. Will you please stop running in the hall? Like who talks like that? Who talks like that? I don't talk like that. Am I saying I'm evil? In the school for good, the girls are really mean girls. They're like mean girls who are trying to be good girls. Princess girl who ended up in the evil school should have ended up in the school for good because all the other girls who were there were just like her. They were pretty, but they weren't good people. So I don't understand, unless you're trying to flip the script on people so that we don't really know and all the princesses are going to turn out evil, I could not finish this story. I really have a difficult time with turning women characters, turning female characters into just two dimensional people. You're either good or you're evil. You cannot have any complexity in your character. You're just either good or evil. Like I have, I have so many facets to me, to my personality. I have feelings. As you can tell, I really did not enjoy this book and I would give it a thumbs down. Maybe I'm too old to enjoy that kind of story, but I thought it would be interesting to pick up. I have a niece who's going to be eight. I would not give her this book to read. She already gets so many messages about beauty equaling goodness. And that's not the kind of message that I want her to have. And people are not just good or evil. I mean, there's some people who are evil, like, you know. I would not recommend this book to anyone, big or small. Really, there are other ways of doing it than saying not all beautiful people are good, not all ugly people are bad. Like, 
and throwing the emo girl into the school for good with princesses who are treating her poorly? That's the good school? Come on now. No, no, no. I don't agree. Please tell me what you think if you've read these books before. Let me know what you thought about those books. If you think I'm wrong about the school for good and evil, please let me know. Let me know if I should continue this book because it was tough. And if you have not yet, please subscribe. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your experience on YouTube. And thank you for being a part of mine.